happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, we, we all look kind of colorful and, and blingy up here. Um, you'll find out why that is later on. But um, even when we're not dressed this way, we, we feel it. We feel blingy inside all the time. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's wonderful to have you join us today. Happy January 24th. We've got an exciting uh, day of music and a wonderful message. So um, let's just get right into it. We'll start with our opening song. Um, grab something blingy and sing along with us. Be as good as you are. so happy that you joined us at the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Linda Brewer and we are a spiritual community where all are welcome to join our virtual love streaming services. Our practitioner holding high watch from home this morning is Jim Ferris. Throughout the service he will be in prayer knowing that the best and highest is unfolding as we share this sacred time together. Our prayer practitioner this morning is Teresa Martin. Our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among religions. We honor every pathway by which people seek to know and connect with the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness so that we can help make the world a better place. So today, as we affirm together our center's spiritual purpose by speaking that out loud, I invite you to ask yourself, is this also my purpose as part of this center? And also, have I clarified my own personal spiritual purpose? So let's say the center's purpose together. We, we are, are an open, welcoming, welcoming community, community, celebrating our divinity, divinity loving our, our humanity, humanity and nurturing our journeys of spiritual discovery. Thank you. We're really loving our humanity today. <laughs> you know that I keep reminding you to uh, please check the website regularly for updates. Well, for sure this week you're going to want to do that because 
here's some news that a lot of you have been waiting for. As of this moment, our intention is to allow very limited in-person attendance starting next week. Ooh. Masks, social distancing, signing in so we can contact trace will all be required. There will be more detailed information later this week on the website and in Thursday's newsletter. So please check there for all the requirements in order for you to attend and help keep all the folks up here and everyone safe so that we can do this together. And if you haven't been with us long enough for it to have become part of your subconscious mind, the place that you'll find that information is our website, which is www.spirituallyfree.org. While you're there, you can also submit a prayer request, look at what's coming up next Sunday and next month. Um, you can find out bios about most of the people who serve here at our center and sign up for our twice week weekly email blasts and all kinds of other things. So please check that out. Our theme this month is Timeless Wisdom, Evolutionary Vision. And our speaker this month is practitioner Selena Baugh. Her topic is Here and Now. And next week, we welcome back Randy Scott as our speaker. Your contribution letter has or will be coming through email this year as we are finding that it is more reliable than the post office is right now. So if you haven't received it, you should in the next few days. Um, please check your spam or junk mail folder if you haven't gotten it yet. Um, we do have a few folks who have contributed that we do not have adequate contact information for. So if you've been a donor and you haven't gotten your email with your donations for 2020 and you would like to have one, please use the contact us form on the website or you can email us at office.assistant at spirituallyfree.org or leave a voicemail on the office phone and that number is also on the website. If you want a paper copy, please be sure that you include your current address and phone number and let us know that you want that. And I want to remind you to not forget to sign up this week because it starts on the 30th, that's next Saturday, for our daily email for the season for nonviolence that runs through January 30th through April 4th. Um, the season for nonviolence was launched at the United Nations in 1998, and it marks the annual 64 calendar days between the, mem the memorial anniversaries of the assassination of Gandhi on January 30th and that of Martin Luther King Jr. on April 4th. The season teaches us that every person can move through the world forward in a place of peace through daily nonviolent choices and actions. And I'm just thinking that if ever there was a year that um, we could sure use a dedication to nonviolence, this is it. So I encourage you to participate in that. And to do that, sign up. Um, there will be an optional weekly Zoom call on Saturday mornings to discuss the daily affirmations and how your process of peace in and nonviolence is unfolding. So you can, you can get the email on the website and in the newsletter. And as I do whenever I'm up here, I'd like to remind you that the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living was founded on and is grounded in prayer. And um, we have professional prayer practitioners who are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer who are here to help you deal with anything going on in your life, anything, any place that you're struggling, any place that you need a little support. Um, we are here to know the best and highest for you as your life unfolds. Just um, send us a prayer request on the website. And if you'd like a practitioner to call you and pray with you in person, say that and we will have somebody get in touch with you. So right now I invite you to settle in, allow Teresa's reading and the centering music to take you to that sacred space within you. And then Teresa will lead us in prayer. Today's reading <clears throat> is from this thing called You by Ernest Holmes. You're a part of the universal mind, one with the universal substance. You live, move, and have your being 
in pure spirit. All the wealth, the power, and the goodness of this spirit exists at the center of your being. You experience this good in such a degree as you accept, believe, and feel it. Since the only life you have is the life of the spirit within you, you need but to permit its radiance to flow through your thought into self-expression. You are surrounded by a dynamic force, a great surge of living power. You are immersed and saturated with the vital essence of this life. Its presence permeates everything, binding all together in one complete whole. As you enter into life, feeling the divine essence in everything, more and more, you will hear a song of joy singing at the center of your being. You only have to be still and listen to this song of life, for it is always there. is open. It is infused with life, with light, and with joy. This joy is present, and I lean into it. I feel it, I know it. It is there in the peace of my heart. It is there in the joy I experience and the happiness of my day. Everywhere present and in everyone. And on this beautiful snowy morning, I bless all who are listening to us, who are enjoying the music, the prayers and the speakers. I welcome each and every one who listens and who feels a call to be real and to be who they really are, their true selves as God beings on this planet. 
With deep and humble gratitude, I bless all. I am grateful for the time, the day, the beauty, the prosperity. In deep gratitude, I give thanks for all that is welcome. I welcome with my open heart for all that is good and that says yes to the Spirit. For all of that, I give thanks and release as together we say. And so it is. Thank you, Teresa. I don't know if you can tell from where you're sitting, or standing, driving, well, We'll see. <laughs> our, um, our experience up here on the stage looks quite a bit different. Um, there's been a couple people at least who've done quite a bit of work um, cleaning up the stage um, and then repainting it and then putting a coat of urethane on. Um, many, many thanks to Jeff Gray and Raj Harus um, for so much work um, to get that done. And you'll notice we gave Ricardo a raise. <laughs> he's, <coughs> um, he's up up on a mobile platform. Um, it's so nice to be able to see you up there, man. You get hidden behind the front line. Um, anyway, so much gratitude for, for all that work, um, the cleaning, painting, restructuring, refurbishing the, the stage area. Um, you know, when, when we take our adventures in life, we always start from um, a foundation, hopefully. Um, if I want to climb a mountain, I'm certainly going to do some studying and find out all about that. For us to feel spiritually free, um, it's important that we have some foundation to, to our beliefs and, and our practices. And that's one of the purposes of this, this month, is to remember the foundations of our teaching, our philosophy, the science of mind, um, as we can be much more liberated in our adventures if we just build on that solid foundation. So this is a song that speaks to that. I would just love this song. Um, if you listen as you sing these words with us, um, you'll get a, a great glimpse of the foundations of our philosophy. It's called There is One Life. One, two, uh, one, two, three. There is one life, there is one love, there is one infinite presence. I am one with God. I am one with God. There is one life, there is one love, there is one infinite presence. 
Yeah. Too much fun. Speaking of fun, it's my privilege to introduce our special music today. This gentleman has been spreading his love and joy all over the valley, all over the world now with this uh, new technology we have. Um, we call him Mr. Fun. He certainly is that. He loves to sing, but even more than that, he loves to create and connect with people. And um, I just love him for that. He is so bold and brave and joyful. And I just, we just can't help but kind of giggle whenever we see um, Mr. Critch Kurt. And uh, that's why we're all dressed up today. He, he actually asked us to uh, put on something blingy and colorful. And how could you say no to that? <laughs> Let's bring up the amazing Mr. Fun, Chris Kirch. I don't know what he means by the bold, shiny, blingy stuff. <laughs> what it is sure is fun. Um, I wanted to sing a song, in fact, of several songs that I've done videos and music videos too. Uh, really hard to decide what to do. Uh, until finally it, it uh, dawned on me. Something that, that I've been doing with several of our friends, or at least a few of our friends, every week, uh, beginning last spring through November, we would, we would go to Carol Harris's house, sit out in the backyard and sing songs together. And it was just so precious, such good times with, uh, with all of our friends. And then one day, uh, Carol asked me if, if uh, I knew an old song from like 30 years ago, and it was called The Dance. Most of us have heard it and said, but I haven't heard that song in 30 years. And all of a sudden, it turned out that Carol and us, we would sing this song at the end, at the end of the night. Every Friday night, we would sing this song, The Dance. And it is so priceless. Uh, but what's mostly priceless about it is the song is not about what you've lost and what you miss, but what you're grateful for. And my little sweetheart, Jerry, she has like a hundred of these angels sitting around the house, and I stole one today to bring here as a message for me to remember to always be grateful. All, all the wonderful experiences we've had in our life and that they're not gone. They're never gone. We get to share them over and over again in our hearts and with our friends. And this little music video is all about that those special moments in our lives that we will always be able to treasure, even when we can't see them. Here's my little angel. Here's the song. would fall 
okay, who's to say? You know I might have changed it all And now I'm glad I didn't know The way it all would end The way it all would go Our lives are better left to chance I could have missed the pain, but I'd have to miss the dance. Yes, our lives are better left to chance. I could have missed the pain, but I'd have to miss the So have to take a second and get myself together. Um, in preparing for this talk, I was revisiting some of those sweet memories that um, are bittersweet at this point, but still sweet. So our theme for this month is timeless wisdom, evolutionary vision. One week one, Reverend Myrna talked about the foundational principles of science of mind, which are not only the bedrock on which our organization was built, but still provides us with timeless wisdom. She also reminded us that it is us that it is critical to stay open at the top, which allows us to continue to learn and expand. And she explained why the use of visioning is a wonderful tool as we open to new possibilities. Week two, Cameron talked about the importance of being personally grounded and how to recognize and embrace the principle of oneness. Learning to foster the ability to ground ourselves brings peace, compassion, and a broader perspective of the events and circumstances in our lives and in the world around us. Also, it is critical not only for our own heal health and forward expansion, but will also, will also expand out into our communities and into our world. This past Sunday, Wonder Woman showed up and shared how our minds and social media are, being, are contributing to the social upheaval we are experiencing. Among many other points she made, I found this one particularly interesting because in the last few weeks, I have become more acutely aware of what I see on social media and the need to step back a bit and broaden my perspective so I'm getting a clear picture of what is happening in our world and my contribution and what my contribution has been, and how and where I want to show up moving forward. As I listen to each of the speakers this month, I have felt called to further embody the principles and practices that I know will aid me on my continuing journey of discovery. Knowing there are always new horizons to be explored and that I am always at choice. The question for me is always, do I keep moving or do I build a comfortable box and call it home? The theme for this week 
is looking ahead. When I first saw the theme, I was excited. I love looking ahead. Anywhere but here, oftentimes. The very thought of letting go of the past year and stepping into a fresh new year was exhilarating because there was a part of me that thought I could just slam the door shut on last year and nail it shut. However, as the new year drew nigh and launched, I realized I was being delusional. Unfortunately, not the first time, or probably the last. Over the past few weeks, I have watched as the infection rate of the pandemic continues to rise, and I have watched as our, watched our capital being stormed with disbelief. As I started to explore why I couldn't just step away from the past year without a backwards glance, I found this quote from, Dr. Erne, or from Ernest Holmes. In the science of mind, maybe, in the science of mind, we do not say everything is all right when it is all wrong. This got me to think, thinking about the term spiritual bypass. I had heard this term before, but had never taken the time to really understand the full context of what it means. John Wellwood, a Buddhist teacher and a psychotherapist, explains the term spiritual bypass as, whoops, one too many, the tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to sidestep or avoid facing unresolved emotional issues, psychological wounds, and unfinished uh, developmental tasks. Wellwood explains that in spiritual communities, we tend to confuse absolute reality and relative reality. So to clarify, he defines them as follows. Absolute re reality is that which is changeless, eternal, and transcendent. It is the absolute truth of oneness of all and the nature of how things really are in the universe. Relative reality is that which is subject to change, time-bound, and dependent. It is observable phenomena of the worldly existence. Your environment, circumstances, resources, relationships, identities, and feelings you experience. Both realities are true, and absolute reality isn't better than relative reality. Personally, I have always struggled with the notion of denying the reality of an event or circumstance in my own life or playing out in the world around me. During classes and later practitioner training, I not only learned the principles of this philosophy, but also how to apply them in my life. The best tool in my toolbox was the use of argumentative prayer, which recognizes not only the relative reality of any event or circumstance, but also the absolute reality, which is changeless, eternal, and transcendent. For me, this is, was the marriage of, sorry, for me, this was the marriage of the heart and the mind, which continues to be my foundation. When trying to understand a concept or term, I find examples helpful. So the following are excerpts from Wellwood's examples of spiritual bypass. As I read through them, see what, if anything, comes up for you. Spiritual bypass number one. I don't have attachments. I'm not affected because I'm not attached. From an absolute perspective, you may get the idea that this person doesn't need material possessions, relationships, and so forth. Yet, from a relative perspective, everyone needs healthy attachment and relationships, shelter, clothing, and a means to eat. The, the teaching is not to overvalue the objects of your life but to understand their place. Denial of this truth can easily lead to avoidance, 
and repression of fundamental needs. Further, suggesting you or someone else is too attached is shaming and unhelpful. Whoops. Spiritual bypass number two. I don't see color. All lives matter. We are all one human race. In the absolute reality, oneness is true. And from a non-dualistic perspective, you could even in add in animals, plant life, and all of manifestation. Yes, we are absolutely one. In relative reality, this is a harmful dismissal of the very real world we live in, we, where we are not treated as one human race, nor do we have the same access to safety, health care, housing, food, education, and other basic human needs that matter for all lives. Denying color not only invalidates experiences and tells people you don't see them, but it also permits an avoidance of responsibility for doing your part to create the conditions that are equal and beneficial for everyone. Whoops, keep hitting it twice. Spiritual bypass number three, good vibes only. Focus on the positive. The, this is probably one of my favorites. The intention of these statements may be to encourage yourself and others or to set boundaries with toxic behaviors and actions. However, the impact may be toxic positivity, which can be shaming and alienating to those, including yourself, struggling with trauma, grief, mental health issues, or systemic injustice. If someone struggles with depression, telling them to be positive is not effective in addressing the underlying reasons. Good vibes only is far from an invitation to open up about an abusive relationship or a loss they are grieving. I can't imagine telling a community whose people are being killed in the streets or caged at the border to focus on the positive. Finding the good in the world and having hope are useful and necessary, but welcoming all feelings and parts of yourself and others is a vital principle for uncovering authentic hope. And the last one, spiritual bypass number four. Anger is a destructive emotion. The only thing to fear is fear itself. The harm of statements such as these is grossly overlooked in our society. Anger and fear are often considered to be negative, destructive emotions that need to be banished from our psyche. This is another form of bypass. While it may not be helpful to live from anger or fear, bypassing them is not the answer for two reasons. Number one, both anger and fear are normal human emotions that help you survive and can even be beneficial in certain circumstances. Anger can protect more vulnerable emotions, illuminate injustice, and provide motivation and fuel for engaged action. Fear also serves to protect and can give you important information you may need. Two, silencing or condemning anger or fear is like putting a bandage on a gash that requires stitches. You may manage to stop the bleeding and cover the wound momentarily, but it is sure to open back up without proper attention, care, and treatment. Hmm. As I read through these bypass statements and explanations provided, I recognized my own use of most, if not all of them, plus a few others, most often against myself, but also against others, whether in words, actions, or deeds, or thoughts. I have also been the recipient of these types of statements. Usually, I have used these statements to avoid my own discomfort or feelings, and as a recipient, I usually shut down and didn't feel safe to continue sharing. 
This past year is a perfect example because although it has been challenging for many reasons, I often reminded myself that comparatively speaking, it was far from the worst year of my life. Also, knowing there are so many people right here in our country dealing with extreme hardships, grief, isolation, and or anger. I dismissed or minimized my own feelings. As Wellwood points out, this is not a healthy response. <laughs> Pushing down or bottling up these types of emotions can, or can present health challenges or result in fits of rage or depression. These are simply feelings humans experience. Recognizing that they are there and finding ways to talk them out or using them as a catalyst for expansion can bring about healthy changes. The relative reality of what is happening, not only in the world at large, but the very real issues that continue to plague us here in our own country, means that before we can move forward, we need to take some time to evaluate what has been or our current circumstances. This is critical information needed to move forward. The process of evaluation, much like a threshing machine, which separates the grain from the straw and chaff, helps us to sort out our thoughts and beliefs that have thrown up roadblocks or called in experiences that we no longer need to experience. During the sorting, it is important to recognize and keep the knowledge, strength, intuition, compassion, life skills, and other gifts we have gained from our life's journey. Also, we need to keep close those connections and things that will help us move forward into deepening and expanding awareness. It took me a few years and some good mentors to begin to recognize that my feelings were meant to provide information, but not rule my life. The first time I remember being terrified and deciding to move forward anyway was in my early 30s. I had decided that if my life was going to change, it was time to step out of my self-inflicted box and try something new. So. When invited, I decided to take my then 12-year-old son, James, on a five-day backpacking trip with a group of friends. Although by this time we had lived in Montana for a number of years and we camped almost every weekend, we usually did so within sight of our car. This trip meant James and I would be backpacking for the first time and a two-day hike from our vehicle. So this was definitely an out of the box adventure for the two of us. I was told we would have llamas to carry our tents, food, and cooking gear, but that we would be responsible to carry everything else we might need for five days. At first, I thought, how hard could that be? Although I had some camping skills and understood how fast the weather can change in Montana, especially at the elevations we would be hiking to, I leaned heavily on the knowledge of the rest of the group who had all done at least some backpacking and some had extensive experience. I had many moments of fear and self-doubt as I packed and repacked and tried it on and then packed and repacked again. I soon realized that embarking on this trip was a giant leap out of my comfort zone. Worrying that I might not have the physical strength to get me and my pack to our destinations led to a realistic heart-to-heart -heart conversation with my son. I had to admit that I probably wouldn't be able to help him if he overpacked. And yet, the importance of packing what was needed to stay safe. Looking back now, I realized that even before we stepped a foot on the trail, we were learning and growing as individuals, and at the same time, deepening our relationship. By the time we were ready to embark on this journey, we understood the possible challenges ahead. We were prepared. We trusted ourself, ourselves 
each other, and the companions we had chosen to journey with. The journey wasn't without challenges. We camped for four days in pouring rain. But the rewards were beyond anything I could have imagined at the time. Looking back at the adventure from this perspective, from today's perspective, I recognize that this was one of the first steps out of old patterns, and it literally set me on a path to a new life. As we begin this new year, it is time to plan our journey and turn our focus to where it is we want to go. And not acknowledge all of the feelings and emotions you have experienced in the past year and will continue to experience. Thank them for the information they have provided and consciously release any that are not of service in this moment. As we pack our backpacks for the journey ahead, it is important to pack only what is essential for the journey and trust that everything else you will need will be provided along the way. So I invite you just to take a minute, take a breath. That's a lot of information. And take some time to dream and just for a moment, step past any fears or doubts. What possibilities lie ahead? Where are the growing edges within yourself, our community, and our world? And truly, just what is really needed for the journey ahead. As we finish up this morning, I want to share two quotes with you, then we will close with a prayer. This quote is from Jeff Brown's book, The Grounded, or Grounded Spirituality. If you want to live a more spiritual life, live a more human life. Be more truly, madly, deeply human. And the second quote is from Ernest Holmes, Living the Science of Mind. There is no place in this practice for arrogance or the holier-than-thou attitude. The great have always been humble. The great have always been kind. The great have always been lovers of humanity. Let us pray. In this moment, I rest in the absolute reality of the one presence and power, knowing it as absolute love and the creative force behind all of manifestation, always has been and always will be. Accepting this as true, I know that we are expressions of that one power in this moment always and without end. When I step into and fully embrace this truth, I know that all things are possible. I know that there is no them and us. Although there may be appearance of division at the root of all there is but one. I know we all have access to all the knowledge intelligence, strength, hope, and compassion that has ever been or will ever be right here and right now. I invite you to join me in this knowing and to allow this conscious knowing to ripple out from this moment and this place. I do not have all of the answers, and I don't believe any one person or group of people know what will best serve humanity in this moment. But as we broaden our perspectives, open our hearts and minds to the all-knowing mind of the divine, I trust that all will be revealed and the path will be made clear. From this place of knowing and claiming, all things are possible and every, anything that would stand in the way of the highest and best for all of humanity 
will simply dissipate back into the nothingness from which it came. Hmm, I'm truly grateful for our time together this morning, for this philosophy, for all the beautiful music and other words that were spoken this day, and for each of you being here with us and sharing in this service. So I just release this word. It's spoken, therefore it's done. As together we say, and so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. are so incredibly very blessed. Um, thank you, Selena, for that wonderful reminder about the damage that spiritual bypass can do. All right, this is one of our wonderful spiritual practices, that practice of per per participating in, <laughs> in the divine flow, um, recognizing the abundance of good that has come to us. Um, which sometimes it takes the practice of gratitude to see what that is. Um, but then participating in that flow, not letting it stagnate, but participating in it by giving out um, so that the flow can keep going. Um, and so this is the time where we share our financial blessings with each other. And I want to express my deep appreciation for all of you who have continued to support our center. Um, during this really difficult almost year now, holy moly, um, I know in March I thought, oh, this will be over in a couple months. <laughs> yes, well, delusions. <laughs> However, um, thanks to a lot of um, end of the year giving, um, we have been able to get out of the hole that we were in and to continue to provide these services. So from the bottom of my heart and for all of us here at the center. Thank you so very much. So let's keep it going until we can all be here together again, okay? So if you will, I invite you to join me in sharing our offering blessing. Divine, Divine love, love as, as me blesses and, and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, filled with gratitude. I let this be, and so it is.
let's invite Mr. Fun Critch Kirch back to the stage. Some more special music. <laughs> There's a message in here somewhere. <laughs> One of the favorite songs that I've done with these guys and, and friends, uh, starting about, whoa, <laughs> I just saw myself. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> oh, oh, well, they're going to lock me up for sure now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Several years ago, I started going to nursing homes and singing songs, uh, and it was so much fun to see the uh, elderly people get excited about songs. Um, and then they threw me in the, the memory care unit uh, with Alzheimer's and dementia patients. I thought, well, that's kind of scary. And then you start singing old songs that they knew, and they would light up, and they would... It was so amazing how life would come to me and they'd know every word of the song and it was so fun. This song we're going to do right now uh, is an old song that I've always loved, always fun to do, especially with this gang. Um, but we changed some of the words uh, to make it all happy. So this is You Are My Sunshine. Those are my grandkids. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy in every way. I hope you know, dear, how much I love you more and more every day. The other night, dear, while I was sleeping, I dreamed I held you for so long. When I woke, dear, I was so happy. I got up and wrote you this song You are my sunshine, my only sunshine You make me happy in every way I hope you know, dear, how much I love you More and more every day No matter what you try, no matter how you fly I love you, I love you No matter where you go, no matter how you flow Not every day you see a pig on a ball. <laughs> it's my favorite. Awesome. Oh, Chris, you really raised the bar. Uh, music videos, my goodness. Uh, wonderful messages. Um, Selena, thank you so much for just an outstanding talk. Um, uh, the quotes from Ernest Holmes I've never read before. At least I don't remember. I'm sure I must have read them, but, but it's, um, 
it was just uh, it was just a wonderful topic, um, reminding us about loving humanity and the hum human in us, and uh, being um, honorable, you know, honoring our feelings and honoring other people's feelings, avoiding those bypasses. It's just great, great talk. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please remember at one o'clock uh, to tune in for the Zoom chat with Reverend Myrna. Uh, stay connected. Um, you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. And join us in this last song for today. I am as God created me. Two, three.